everybody. Welcome to the weekend. It's Thursday. Hang in there. You're almost there to the weekend. And welcome to another episode of A Blind Guy. His wife. Their Life Live. Live. On this channel, we explore entertainment, career choices, and health and wellness as we work to change the narrative of normal, shifting the focus from what it means to be, from what it means being disabled to being differently able. Every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 11.15 a.m. We spend Easter about a- Standard Time. Yeah, I need that time. <laughs> yes, I always have to get in there. Speaking of get, getting you, Corey, sit up, sit forward, turn this way. <laughs> Y'all, my mama brought us some new chairs to, yesterday for our studio. Corey got comfortable. He just laid back, you know, looking like he's at home, but that's okay, you know. I was sitting up pretty straight. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we, we know that the folks are out there. You guys are here for us regardless. But yeah, so every every Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday at, at 11, 15 a.m., we spend Eastern Standard Time. We spend about a half hour or so with you, introducing you to fabulous people within our personal and professional network. Today is no exception. But before we begin, remember, this broadcast is member supported by viewers like you. So if they want to join us in our mission to make this broadcast happen, what can they do, Queen Marie? Well, guys, you can do a couple of different things. Scrolling right there at the bottom of the screen is buy me a coffee forward slash uh, blind guy, his wife. So that means if you'd like to support this uh, production, you can always go to blind guy, his wife uh, or buy me a coffee.com forward slash buy me a coffee. Blind guy, his wife, and you'll see us right there at the top Sit of the up. screen. Get straight. Make sure you read this up right on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Scroll down, and that way you can select how many coffees you like to buy. One coffee, three coffee, five coffees, 35 coffees. I'm going to put in 55. There's already five. So you can type in your own number. You can leave a nice message, and it does show you how much you would be supporting this member supported production. Uh, and the, it, it shows the amount that you would be supporting, and it also shows you that 100 proceeds. 100% of all proceeds go to Atumpan Edutainment right there at the bottom. That's a 501c3 nonprofit organization that Corey and I founded 22 years ago. So it's not a two person team, it's a full, oh my goodness, it's a full scale situation. So we are storytellers. Right here, there is a story for you as a gift if you would like to support buymeacoffee.com. But of course, you can always support in various ways because this weekend, uh, Atumpan Edutainment has organized the Carter G. Woodson Festival. That means if you go online, this is what you'll see. Atumpan Edutainment presents Carter G. Woodson Festival. Guys, all of the information is there. You can buy, purchase your ticket, $12.00. Uh, early bird access, $15 at the door. I'll put the link to this site in the chat so that you can just click on it. You can share this on Facebook. People can see this from around the world. And we actually do have folks coming on. You can look at all of the different, the lineup. Some of these folks you've seen right here on Blind Guy, His Wife, Their Life. So, you know, you can view the event program. How will this look? Uh, you can learn more about us because we don't talk a lot about Atom Pond Edutainment here, but we do appreciate your support. So just remember, this is a virtual event, so you can buy your virtual ticket and have the best seat in the house, which is the couch in your house. Hey! Now, with that being said, we have a <laughs> great guest in line for today that has been involved with Atom Pond Edutainment in numerous productions. She's a very talented actress, but also an innovator when it comes to education, especially in the homeschool environment. She is none other than the fabulous Carla Turner. We're gonna bring Carla in to say hello to everybody. Oh yeah, let's say good morning. Hey there, Carla, how are you? Hey, good morning. You know, Carla, I know that you are a thespian. You are a true actress. You're acting, uh, you're in a production right now. You're always in a production. You're going to give us some tips on how to be our best selves because you're also an educator. I don't know which one you would put higher, uh, educator, um, entertainer. Of, what do you of, say, Car- Carla? You know what? I like what you guys say. I like what you, you say edutainment. So, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm an edutainer. Hey, I, I like it. Well, we're going to hear more about that soon. The folks are already talking to my, hey, Carla, we haven't even gotten to the comments yet. Look at yeah, Sharon We're going to ask you, we're going to ask you who's going to read the comments, but we're going to have to end See you soon, day. Carla. We're going to end the day with our plant-based treat of the day. Oh, absolutely, guys. You know that every day we're trying to get you to increase your fruits, 
increase your vegetables. And not just because we want you to, it's nutritional, it helps you, it's healing, all those good things. So just get a sneak peek. This is something that anyone can do. Great grilled cheese. All right. Okay, so that is your, anybody can make a grilled cheese, right, Corey? Uh, most people. Most people. So that's going to be your plant-based treat. And of course, there's always a surprise. All right. So the Queen Marie, you will be reading the comments today. So okay. let's, let's see what the people out there are saying. I'll be in the audience. Got it. Let's see. Well, you know, Shine Bright beat everybody to the punch. She says, Grand Rising fam. Shine Bright, you are not on the job. It is cold. It is raining. You got to get out there and get the sunshine going. Please, because, you know, I heard the rain this morning. I even heard thunder last night. But, hey, she's shining bright regardless. We don't need the sun. It's within us. Hey, good morning, all. Good morning to you, Philip Waldo Jr. Philip Waldo Jr. in the house. He was a great guest yesterday. Yes. By his vocal talents as a voiceover artist. Vocal talents as well as people were really excited about his seasoning tips, his cooking tips, how to smoke meats and all of those good things. So you check that out on the replay. Absolutely. Sean Bright says, reminder, guys, smash that like button. So she's got that thumb up going across. If you don't know where the like button is, it's the thumbs up button right underneath the video. You go out of the chat by hitting the X, you hit the thumbs up or the like button, and then you click the word live chat again. So, uh, good. hey there, Karen. She says good morning. Karen in the house. Good morning to you, Karen. Karen is a fantastic, uh, Woody, I was trying to get some alliteration going on, of course. She's one of the fantastic folks. We just love her. She helps out so much with our Instagram. And so many of the things for Autumn Pond Entertainment are, are her doing. Not blind guy, his wife, their life. That's why it's kind of neglected on Instagram. <laughs> but anyways, if you need that virtual information, guys, we've listed it. So you can just click on that in the chat. So if you'd like to attend that event this weekend, if you have family and friends that want to attend, they definitely can. So, of course, we've got, hey, look at who's here. Giselle Moore says hello. Hey, man. Giselle Moore in the house. So you guys know that everybody that we talk to in these streets, in these Internet streets, they're actually amazing folks. So let's just say you are um, an author. Ooh. This is Giselle's book. Y'all see this? She got a real book. This ain't no, like, it, there's a spine. There's a binder. That was just my device for it. Um, there's a barcode on the back. We got real people in these streets. Uh, uh, uh. And it's a good read, too. No, because I don't know what you're going to do with that. You know, Philip Waldo Jr. was also saying, hey, Carla. Oh, you know what? Giselle is a farmer. Guys, the lady is a right. farmer. Chapter, She's an author. She's a mom. Four. She's a wife. Hey, when, Carla. Once I got, once I got arrested, it. I'm trying to drive you Once out. I got arrested for all the things that I had done and my past caught up with me, I spent 30. I apologize to <laughs> sell for the co host. No, I'm, I'm just trying to get some, let people know how juicy the read is. No, oh, oh yeah, 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 y'all. Get this Amazon. The husbands I thought I found on Amazon. So, uh, hey, get the book. Just, you'll see the Giselle on the show soon, very soon. So we also have JP. Hey, JP saying, hey, y'all. JP in the house. So happy to have you here. And Giselle Moore is saying thank you. Uh, but she's also laughing at you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Making the book even better. It's actually a quick read, a good read, an easy read, and all of those things. And it was money well spent. So I'll have to put the title into the chat. The Husbands I Thought I Found by Carla G. Morrison. And it's on Amazon. So, you know, the nice thing is our people Carl are Morrison. Carl G. Morrison. Yeah, our people are. Okay. Our, yeah, two Carlos today. Our guest is Carla. We got Carla and Brighton Books. And Philip Waldo Jr. Is, uh, says big up to the grilled cheese. He's like, grilled cheese makes the world go round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with that. Well, Corey, give us a story to get us into our guest today because I'm excited about her. Um, she has some, fans, some fantastic stuff to share with us about theater, some tips about learning, how we can help others to learn, all that good stuff. What do you do when you're a child and you're eight years old and you find yourself being a caretaker for your parent that is differently able? And how do you get the, energetic, the energy and outlets that you need to, for recreation? You turn to what lots of young ladies turn to, drama. Hey. But I don't mean drama in the bad sense. I mean drama as taking your acting skills to the stage. And that is what our our featured guest has done with her life. She's taken her acting skills to be in some several productions that have made her famous for her comedy, made her famous for her dramatic and her, her dram dramatic talents. She is also a great directress 
And she's not bad on the dance floor either. Mm. She's been featured in several productions for Occupy Entertainment, and her work has allowed her to travel. And she's even met the fantastic Mr. Chadwick Boseman in her travels. May he rest in peace. Mm. Today's time for today's featured guest is Miss Carla Turner. Hey. 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 Wait a minute. I, how, how are you coming in dancing? What is going on? You know what? She is turned up. <laughs> That's how you have to live life, just turned up all the time. So, you know what? Speaking of turned up, last night I downloaded an app. Guys, it's scrolling right there at the bottom of the screen. It's called uh, Kingdom Purpose TV because you are everything. Like, we know you as a thespian. We know you as an educator. We know you as a social worker or like Corey likes to say, a beta snatcher. But, you know, I did not realize that, hey, you're into productions as well. And, um, girl, you do, you're doing it all. You are doing it all. So let me tell you what the people are saying, because, you know, everybody loves you, Carla. And JP says, uh, Carla, you look familiar. Did you go to NSU in 97, 98? <laughs> <laughs> you see how you see how people will give all put all your business in the street. What if you wanted to say you were born, you know, around 97, 98? <laughs> you know, you know what? You when a when a person from mentions NSU, behold the green and gold, you know, it's a hey. family best best university in the world. I praise God for NSU, they prepared me for absolutely every challenge, and I appreciate Norfolk State University. Yeah, it's an HBCU, and, you know, that's one of the magnificent things about it. Well, you know, the other Carla is saying, yes, Carla on live soon, you know, Giselle, the author. <laughs> so she was she was answering the question, too. But, you know, uh, Karen Pino says, hey, as well as Boss Bay Cammy, she's saying, hey, hello, how you doing? Karen says you are a lifesaver. Uh, we know what you meant, Giselle, no problem. Uh, Giselle was like, no, I, I wasn't at NSU because she has a great uh, profile photo as well and you can right. see her very clearly. So Giselle might've been at NSU. She was like, oh dang, you meant the other Carl. <laughs> so let's jump right into this with you as an educator. Cause Karen, I know what Karen's talking about. She says you're a lifesaver because with your school, you were an educator where you were a school teacher, yeah, in the in the formal setting, but then you formed your own school and Karen's children, our children, they've all had a chance to participate in that. Our children were there over the summer, you know, for the summer camp. And whereas Karen's children, they could be there for the school year, the summer camp. And it was blacktastic. It was amazing. Like everything that you offered, all the life skills. My daughter says she learned how to cook grilled cheese. And yo, you know, what what they doing playing with fire? Tell us more about this. <laughs> Listen, everybody must work. Um, I had a fantastic time working with the children. If if the if someone says I was a lifesaver, I have to return and say um the children I work with and the families I work with were lifesavers. There was never a dull moment. Anyone who walked in the door felt like a celebrity because all the kids, hello, miss, you know, they, I mean, it was like an announcement. So it was just an uplifting environment to be in. Um, skills, yes, grilled cheese is a skill. Serving your fellow students is a skill. And you know what? It fosters that sense of community. And so that's what I like about I don't, I could delegate. I don't have to uh, have all the jobs. And the older children, like your children, they were uh, excited about being part of something, um, having a responsibility that showed the other little kids that, hey, we are a family, we're a community, we care about each other. So, yes, you might I really like that. Kids, make no, it you know, kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah. really yeah. cool. Other things. We Go had ahead. a little assembly line. We had somebody on bread, somebody on that's butter, what, somebody on the the assembly, somebody saying. flipping. Your baby that's was exactly. an excellent flipper. She was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen is laughing, just you know, thinking back to all of those good things. And you know, this is this is so fun because people remember all the little things. I know that with JP, JP says, I remember sitting beside you. We were both in Dr. Perkins' office. She was my favorite and you were passionate 
English major, I recall. So, you know, these folks, you know, everything you do, folks remember. And speaking of which, Corey, uh, Boss Bay Kamsey says she met us on uh, Wotamai's Wodemai, live stream that night and since then has been watching. Well, so happy to have you, so happy to have you yeah. chatting and watching all the time. You know, folks, remember you, it's great to make a first impression. Global Green Book, she's another one that's made an impression on us. She's a world traveler, Global Green Book is. And uh, she's just saying hello to everyone. And speaking of world travelers, Corey, Zenobia Ridley says, hey. Super no, <laughs> it's not bad. She says, hey, to my favorite family special guest. So let's talk about this because JP says, I took my kids to the Kwanzaa celebration two years ago. You played the elephant. So I'm going to pull that picture up because I think you were a hip hopping hippo. hippo. And, and JP says, you were good, funny and added so much to the production. So this is where uh, Atumpan- Thanks a lot, JB. Just, just, I, the, the, the playwright was just chopped liver, huh? Thanks a lot, JB. <laughs> Corey, Corey wrote the show, I directed it. We had, you know, folks like Tanya Rollins Shadley. She says, hey, great to see you all. You know, she's another thespian of TRS Productions out there calling the show. So tell us how you feel when you're on stage with other people? How do you work with other folks? I've got this picture here where you are with uh, one of Karen's favorites, one of my favorites right here on the screen. So tell us about this hip hop and hippo. What was it? Is that the? Is that... Yeah, she's a hip hop and hippo. Okay, tell us about this time. I was a hip hopping hippo. I love this because um, I got to rap and I uh, <laughs> I had a, a, a great writer write the rap, uh, and <laughs> Corey, and um, I got to do some hip hop dance. And listen, when you're on stage and you're able to come out of your comfort zone, first of all, I'm rapping. Second of all, I am hip hop dancing, which was <laughs> hilarious, okay? And so I love being on stage with the children. Um, as much as I love acting, I love seeing them come out of their shells. I love seeing them blossom as actors and actresses. Um, to see them confident, okay? Mm -hmm. It's something about young people energy that just uh, excites you. So I love being on stage with children. I love being in productions with children. They just bring a whole different excitement <laughs> or flavor. You just never know what's going to happen. That's why yes. I love it. Well, you know, definitely um, Carla is saying, oh, my heart, you know, everybody on stage. And then Giselle is saying, too cute, Carla. Giselle also said, you know, family, this is really your calling. I enjoy watching you both. So she enjoys watching you. She's, she, was a, she watches us often. So she said, hey, you know, this just gets better and better. You know, this is, this is just community. It's family, and Giselle is also saying she loves working with children. You can be as silly as you want to be, and it's just as fun. And I love doing drama, so I get it, Carla. We are twins. Carla, Carla. <laughs> now, you said this word several times: community and family. And being an educator in these days and times that we're in now, with running around, running around, what advice do you have for parents that find themselves at home with children? From your and basing it on your experience as both a public school educator and having your own homeschool co-op. Right, because I've got a picture of you and your child, one of your children, on the screen. So you know, tell us about that. Spending time with your children. Would we how do you spend time with your children? How do you use drama? What should people do nowadays? Go ahead. Listen. I was one of those teachers when I worked in the school system that I actually did snow dances, okay? I love being with my kids. I love to <laughs> shut the school down. I, I, I want to build a snowman. I want to have a snowball fight. Um, and so I think that's what, um, as a parent, you have to figure out, okay, what's going to make this experience exciting for the child? What's going to make this experience Experience exciting for me. And so I would tell parents, listen, um, take a deep breath first. All right, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. All right. And then think about how can I use the quality of this time together um, to stay sane. It is important for you to build a community. And listen, what better place to build a community than 
on your Facebook page. Okay. If you have 1,500 oh. friends, if you have 1,500, <laughs> it's time to take those friendships to a deeper level. It's time to take uh, those friendships. Uh, I call it a kid co-op sharing. Maybe yes. you need to share your kid. Maybe you need to pass, come up with a way where you can pass kids around, even if it's an hour. An right. hour of sanity time will take you far. And so it, this is a time of building bridges. If ever there was a time that you could not be an island, it is now. All right. Um, and yes. Get to I know agree. somebody. To know, to know somebody. So I was going to um, ask more about with her kids. What were you going to say, Corey? I said, do you have a, 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 a co-op for husbands? We can pass the wives around so we get an hour you know See, I'm going to turn our screen off. I'm going to mute us for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> You said a connection getting blurry. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> so we, I'm, I'm looking at you with one of your children right here. According to your face and your cop uh, in your clothing, you are in a show. So it looks like you are spending time with your children. Uh, Shine Bright says she loves your advice. Um, also, we have here where Giselle is saying, uh, "Dang, I wish Carla, but we don't have that. I guess they don't have community." Uh, Tanya Rollins, uh, Chadley says, I tried that. And so Gold Green Book also says that she's doing the snow dance now, another day to work at home. She hopes she can stay home for a week. She loves not going into the office. Mm -hmm. And see, Global Green Book is one that, that uh, talks a lot about her children on her channel, growing up with them, making sure they have, you know, cultural experiences, real experiences, and she's featured them on her channel. So for those folks that are saying they're getting overwhelmed, like Giselle is saying, she started farming and bought a trampoline, things like that. You know, are there any other, are there any other tips that you can give us? Because, you know, Giselle is saying she's worked with children for a long time. Having your own children home can be challenging, especially if you have a child that has special needs. So talk to us about that, because some folks have children with special needs, and I know that for you at your school, you had different types of children that you had all day long. You know, um, I remember one child, she had a button on her stomach, uh, whether you call it a G-tube, a button or whatever. You know what I mean? And so and then kids have had other situations. So tell us what folks can do um, in these. Uh, these situations that feel like that. Mm hmm. Pray, a, a lot of prayer. Prayer is good. Um, that's a great question. Um, and it is hard. I will not lie. Finding people you can trust, uh, having to do background checks just to uh, leave your kid with somebody for an hour, it, it can get pretty dicey. Um, there are some great online resources. Um, I have to plug my brother-in-law and I will have to get more information. Um, online puppet making. Um, there are you know, online James was, James, you're, like you said, your brother-in-law, James, the puppeteer, he was on the, this show uh, two weeks ago, I think. And he had so many resources, like you're saying, things that you can do at home. But I definitely want to bring up this one. I didn't know if you were going to mention this. Take your kids with you to the theater. Act with them, you know, because uh, I know Demarcus. He's a great guy, but I don't have to go home with him and live with him and tell him, take out the trash, sweep the floor, clean the car, you know, bring me breakfast in bed. I don't know what you got to tell him. So I don't have to do those things, but I know that when you have your children at home um, and when you work with them, it makes a difference. You know, it gives you something. And Giselle is like, oh, yeah, I pray, I'm praying every day. So <laughs> Tell us about working with working with your children on stage and what difference that makes. Because, of course, for you, you did not always have the benefit of, you know, being Carla today with older children. You were one day this young Carla right here. And at this time, you were a caretaker for your mom. You know, did you had been doing this for years. It wasn't like you were being taken care of. You were the one, and I'm going to zoom this in so y'all can see if y'all can see Carla real good. Yep, that's young Carla right there. So tell us, Carla, you know, from your experience of being a caretaker, how you had to problem solve, and this is what you're trying to tell the adults today. Yeah, I mean, being eight and taking care of my mom, I started taking care of my mom when I was about seven or eight. She had multiple sclerosis, and she was in a wheelchair 
and you get real creative. Um, what I appreciate about that experience, you don't appreciate it at the time. You think it's unfair at the time, but I learned how to um, improvise. And I learned how to make the best out of my time, the best out of a situation. And um, it, it the responsibility, it allowed me to um, figure out some things Sometimes the, some of the most complicated things, we didn't have a car, how to get somewhere, um, how to use the resources that I had. Um, I remember that, that kind of, you know, that's what that. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just going to say when you said not having a car because you were a child and I remember you saying you were the designated walker because you had a younger sister. It wasn't just you. Yeah. It wasn't, I was the designated walker. I think um, I was telling Corey a story. I mean, a God has always been on my side. And at eight, I had to go to the grocery store. I mean, I prepared meals. I prepared dinner. I was cooking Thanksgiving dinner at eight. And um, I remember this time. And normally I had a ride or I would figure out a ride. But this one particular day, I did not have a ride. And I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have eight bags of groceries and I wow. live. Uh, this is 10 blocks. For those of you all who remember Below in Norview, I'm walking from Below in Norview <laughs> back home. And so I prayed and I felt like, OK, God gave me two good legs and uh, I'm going to take four bags and walk them a couple steps. I'll go back and get four bags and walk them up to the other four bags and I'll get the other four bags. And, you know, I did this for a while until someone came up and saw me doing this and said, hey, can I give you a ride? And so but it's like, listen, wow. I wasn't going to get a ride just sitting in front of the store looking around like, you know, you, right. In you other words, you, you do something. In other words, once you start to do something, other people start to do something as well. Sort of like, you know, um, when we had a suburban and three little children. Some, the, something happened and we had to push it off the road. And this was heavy. The car, this was the real suburban made out of real metal. This was an old one. So Corey was back there pushing by himself. Corey can't see, but he can push. I can see, I can steer. And the kids were little and our oldest one was like seven or six hollering out the back talking about, Daddy, why are we going so slow? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I can't say what I want to say, but okay. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, other people came up and we got help pushing. But like you said, if we would have sat in there, you know, just sat in the car, nothing, nothing would have, no help would have come because they don't know that you need the help until you start doing something and people come out of the woodwork. Giselle was saying, wow, Carla, hats down, you know, to you, hands down. And JP is also saying those experiences definitely build character. Now you, uh, as I know people are hearing the story about you being a child as a caretaker for your mother at the age of eight. But you also did find ways to uh, escape and to be a child. And you found that through the world of theater. And that takes take, take you to some very interesting places. So tell us about how theater can be a great outlet for people, even in these days and times, <laughs> with young children. Right, because I'm just sharing a photo right now, Corey, of her on stage as another character. Uh, but anyways, go ahead on and answer Corey's question. What was your question, Corey? <laughs> I forgot. The question was, how can theater help people to cope with their any type of frustrations or stresses in their life today, as you did, had to, as you, the way you used it when you were younger? Theater gives you an opportunity to escape and become a whole different character. You you don't have to even be yourself when you're on stage, and that's what it allowed me to do. It allowed me to become someone else for that moment, and mm -hmm. um. And taught you how to man sometimes you even it taught you how to manage your feelings manage your emotions um it, it it gave me a place to get all that energy out to be able to excel at something um you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and say it i felt like a normal kid when i was on stage as a kid oh. like everybody else it wasn't this exceptional thing and so um I loved acting um, because my mom was in a wheelchair. I spent a lot of time in the house um, because mm -hmm. you know, she couldn't get to me. If I was out, I couldn't assist her. 
So I spent a lot of time in the bathroom, in the mirror. And that is, <laughs> that is where, you know, the you know, best can still come when you know what your face is doing. So I spent a lot of time talking to myself in the mirror. <laughs> and I promise you all, you know, the people might have thought I was crazy, but I was actually, you know, honing my skills. I was mm -hmm. honing my skills. And See, so... Corey, I, 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 I keep looking at Corey. Right, and I keep looking at Corey because, you know, the rear view mirror in the car, I have always, even before I had children and I started using it to look at them, I used it to look at me because we've been, we've been performing so long that I realized, like, my face says one thing and my mouth is saying another. I need them to both match. And the mirror is definitely a learning place. Now, uh, Giselle is saying, Carla, I love it. You can be anyone you want to be. This is the beauty of it. I missed my drama class when I was in high school. Giselle, you you a drama, you know a drama right now because I see you on your channel. You are smiling, you are giving good vibes. I think that's your real self, but you also, you know, acting it out. So girl, you in it. Just keep it up. <laughs> she also says, Can you give us a little role play right now, if you don't mind? Now, now I do want to say this though. I'm not sure what Phil Waldo Jr. meant when he said, Don't try that now. Because uh, she was talking earlier, he said, don't try that now. I don't know if he meant getting in a car with a stranger, because that's what I was thinking. You know, <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, Philip, I did a lot of praying. And what mm -hmm. I will say about the Norview community is this, and the guys in the Norview community, people really looked out for me. People really mm -hmm. looked out for me. Because I'm telling y'all. So many times I got in them calls, I was like, Lord, be a fence all around me. Right <laughs> now, in this car, if oh, I got to go out, I need you to catch me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, it looks like it looks like Giselle got her role play right there. Yeah, right. Well, you know, I do want to I do want to say this because um, earlier. Global Green Book mentioned, like somebody asked her, you know, how she's doing and all of those kind of things. And she replied to them saying that all is well. Um, you know, I've been focusing and getting fit and fine for Africa. And the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, right here, this is you um, with your other ladies on, on the cardio conversations. And so, you know, when we download the app, Kingdom Purpose TV, we can see cardio conversations anytime or every Saturday morning, y'all broadcast um, at 9 a.m., right? Tell us about that. Oh, okay. Cardio conversations. These are actually a couple of my childhood friends. If you remember the black and white photo where I'm playing uh, Sojourner Truth and um, there's a young lady playing Mama Betts, she's actually in this picture, Katrina. We've been friends since preschool. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tamara. Is that her in the center or over here? Yes. That's Katrina Garrett and uh, the other co-host, Tamara Matthews. We went to elementary school together. So I know we've been oh, forever. Right. And Pam um, had this idea, hey, we should do cardio. We should have a conversation while we're on workout equipment. And what's funny is they had workout equipment. I didn't. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is not a problem. I will have a workout machine by next week. Don't even worry. And what I love about it, we get to have conversations from a Christian perspective about different topics. Lots of fun. We had a Black History show last week uh, mm -hmm. featuring Madam C.J. Walker. And uh, we just talk about different topics and have a good time. So, I, you know, I know maybe I'm trying to get fine for somewhere, too. I'm excited. Look, <laughs> <laughs> what made me excited when she gave the comment. And so right. I love the fact that I get to work out and do what I love, uh, talk and talk about God. I love talking about the Lord. Love well, you know God. what? And so that's what I want to say about this app. It is a Christian app, but the it's a real app, y'all. I'm scrolling on my phone right now. I wish I could show it to y'all, but the, the app is amazing. And uh, you guys, anybody can join into this app. You can purchase a spot. It's quite affordable. I'm talking like you can go outside and find money on the ground and, and earn an, and find enough to get your platform on here. So if you one of those uh, uh, people that's in the closet and you only got three people you're talking to and that's your children and you realize that I want to take my message more, you know, way larger, 
download the Kingdom Purpose TV app. I don't even know I'm that good and I'm promoting them because Carla says, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Carla says do it. And and I see that Carla's on there. <laughs> Look, I was like, do it. <laughs> now, I know we were talking about uh, acting and everything. Your acting has given you some chances to meet some exciting people and to do some exciting things. Uh, you met Mr. Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, and you also mm-hmm. been able to do some television commercials with your husband. Can you oh, tell us about you know that? We, we've got to, I'm going to pull up that commercial because, of course, everybody knows you. You and your husband are from Norview and uh, like that area of Norfolk. And Karen is saying, there's people in Norfolk that don't know Carla. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so uh, Giselle is like, you go, girl. Whereas Global Green Book, she felt that when you were saying about the stranger danger, that's what Philip Waldo Jr. called it back then. You know, it was stranger danger. But Global Green Book, was like, I had to jump in a few cars when I was younger and pray. Let me get to my destination in the same state that I jumped in it. You know, <laughs> right. you know, because the youth are real special. So, so tell us about and this fine XDMC. You ain't never late. X E E E E D E E M C. And um, till it to the top. Till it to the top. You don't stop. Hey, XDMC, expect a call from me later on this afternoon, brother. Anyway, um, uh, XDMC, I I run Corey's schedule, so he may or may not have the time to X E E E E E Y. <laughs> so anyways, tell us, tell us, tell us. about the share with Bozeman meeting and then we'll talk about your commercial. Oh yeah. Wow. You know, chat with Bozeman. I had the absolute privilege not of working with him. I mean, because I mean you have to I have to tell this story because it's just so interesting. Um my friends and I did decided to go to New York because I love acting. I'd love to see that. That's one thing about um, being an actress. You have to be willing to study the craft. You have to be willing to go and see people. And so my friend Angie said, I I have a cousin. Um, We went about, oh my goodness, 12 years ago, maybe longer than maybe 15. And um, she said, my cousin is in New York and he's going to show us how to ride the subway because we had never been on the subway, all right? And so um, she introduces us. She said, this is my um, cousin, Chad. And so there's this skinny little guy with this little head and this beautiful, huge (laughs) smile. And he smiled the absolute entire time. And you know, we like the little old lady. He's like giving us directions and and don't don't stand on the left if you you walk out. I, I didn't know there were rules, y'all. Like when you're on the escalator, do not stand on the left because people will run you over. He's like, no, you know, you have to keep walking. And so <laughs> to get a chance to meet him, he was he is an absolute wonderful. He is the best cousin to my friend. All right, um, mm. just the kind of love that he showed my friend oh my goodness and i had the opportunity not only to meet chad but chad's amazingly talented brother kevin and um uh. who had the opportunity to go backstage at um lion king and so just to what i love about it is you see the actors on stage yeah but to see the human beings behind the scenes who are ac- absolutely wonderful people that to me so, was wait a minute I gotta, I gotta stop you right there because you know we're always backstage and then we're always on stage so my question is is, this, is it the same for these Broadway actors because uh, you know behind the stage that's one thing that's so intriguing and appealing about theater is that you really get these bonds backstage you really have such a great time with each other so was it the same for them were they superficial were they real or at least with this cast with, I, from what you're saying it sounds like the love was Deep. There was the love was deep. What I loved about um because like I said, Chad and Kevin loved their cousin Angie. We had an opportunity to eat dinner with the cast of Lion of Lion King. And uh-huh. what was just hilarious is Pumba at dinner sound like Pumba. And it was like, <laughs> man, it was like he eat with the so wait, 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 you got, you like got it like never went away. You're talking about vocally, right? Vocally, vocally, like, right. vocally, it's like we're sitting at the table, but it's the same voice that was on stage. And it was mm-hmm. like, this is hilarious. <laughs> so, so let me so let me ask you this. Like you're saying, you're mentioning family. I know that nowadays we are 
working in family units. You know, Giselle says, yes, she loves The Lion King. And that's when we could all go to a theater, sit with each other. But nowadays, you know, you were you were cast in a commercial and then they cast your husband because they needed people that could be close to each other. People that were not. Uh, didn't, didn't require social distance or mask. Right. So, you know, Philip Paul the Jr. is like, yes, there are rules. <laughs> so, so we want to we want to share that video if it's okay with you. Tell us about all right, tell us about uh this particular commercial. Did you want to set up in any way? Uh this is my husband's first time in makeup. It was so cute. I took pictures of him. It's like she's patting his little bald head, you know, making sure there's no shine on his brown. And it, it was hilarious because he is not an actor, okay? And so <laughs> for him to get an opportunity to see all the cameras, because it looks like you're on a movie set. There are these cameras, there's the director, there are all these things going on. There's makeup and wardrobe. And so it was, it was, it was cute seeing him in his first, you know, when you have your first moment, it's like all mm -hmm. new and all wonder. So it was real, it was real special. Was this like your first, did, did you feel like you were on your first date all over again? <laughs> it was like the first date all over again. All right. Well, you know, and it's, it's funny that you set it up that way to say that all of these things went into this because it's only a 15 second commercial. And so that's the part that really makes all of this, everything that we're all doing, just so much more magnified because nothing happens just, you know, poof out of thin air. Like you said, all of those things, all of those elements went into it. So I'm going to play that with everybody. Here we go. Share the audio so we can hear it too. Oh, yeah. Make sure you let me know if you can hear it. I'm going to start it. Can you hear it? Could you hear it? Let me see. I heard it. I heard it and then it stopped. Yes. Okay. So um, what I did was I just stopped it so I could make sure that we all see the commercial. So let's see, not that I'm promoting Ford, but. Purchase a vehicle outdoors. We're doing this for your added convenience and comfort, all backed by our exclusive 100,000 mile warranty. Times change, but <laughs> Richmond Ford. All right. <laughs> Carl, you are a woman of many talents. Oh, look, state. you know what, and Giselle said they heard it and then it stopped too. Mm -hmm. um, Hold on, Corey, what you about to say? Because you know Philip Waldo Jr. You got something crazy about he's about to say. What did he say? He said it true because Corey is a thug backstage and a cool dude when eating grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get this line right, my brother, we have a problem. <laughs> no, I was going to say, Carl, Carl, you're a woman of many talents. You're an educational innovator. You are an actress. You're also a gardener, master gardener, that you've been doing that since you were in eighth grade middle school. So we're going to, since you're into gardening, we're going to get you to uh, sit back in the backstage and take some tips and things that are coming out of your garden that you can use to create this next plant. -based. Wait, no, she got to tell us what she's, you know, what she's growing and... Uh, well, can you tell us about getting, the, who got, getting in trouble with Popo? <laughs> <laughs> All mass stuff is legal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, I started in the eighth grade and um, right now, well, not right now, for the summertime, I normally plant squash and zucchini, okra, tomatoes, onion, um, all different types like thyme. I look, I'm going to say herbs, but I just, I said, don't even worry. I'm going to just list them because I already <laughs> know Corey. All right. Some basil. Some paprika. No, I don't have any wild parsley like on good on uh Sanford and Son. Okay, all my parsley come from a little package. Um, <laughs> so um, I enjoy it uh, watching things grow. Um, it helps you to stay in tune with nature. It helps you to also watch um, what's going on. Um, I was sharing with you all that it even makes you uh, pay attention to the condition and state of bees which I think mm -hmm. we need to be more educated about. Uh, you know, I, I had to start right, so, pollinating. So let me say this, because you said we need to be more educated on bees, as in, like, when we were little, it was, oh, no, the bees might sting. It was all negative talk against bees, um, at least for us, you know. Yeah, we, for us, it was like, don't bother them, they won't bother you, and you better not kill one, because... That's gonna that's gonna help that helps the plants to grow. See, so you knew that they yeah. helped the plants to grow. It's not folks from country. 
Right. Country boys. Yeah, and you know what? Giselle is a farmer. She was like, oh yeah, those Carlos will do a little bit of everything. Wow, we are twins, because you know. <laughs> oh, okay, Giselle, when did you say that? Did you say that when I asked her was her stuff legal, or did you say that? She after? said that before. She <laughs> said that before, but meanwhile, JP is laughing. You and just, know what? And, just, and Carla, you said you cross pollen, you pollinate yourself. I mean, if you don't, if there aren't enough bees for whatever reason, um, and I just noticed, I mean, you have to get a Q-tip, and I'm trying to grow squash, so I'm trying to take a little bit of the from the one squash to the other squash. I mean, and, and those are things that are naturally done in, by nature, but because of the condition of nature, because of the decline of the bees in the area, um, yeah. plants don't thrive as well as um, they normally do. Well, you know, Karen is definitely remembering some good stuff. My dad made some mint tea the other day. I 100% forgot that Carla gave everyone mint plants last spring. Glad he kept it alive, you know, because like you're saying, what you started, what you pollinated, it has grown, you know, and it continues to grow in other places. So that's beautiful. And Giselle says that, um, you know, bees are good to have around, but she's scared to have them around her. And Corey, I love you. Has well, anybody you know, ever... Go ahead. Has anybody ever been with the kids? I was talking to Giselle's comment. All right, like I have kids, and so there are like 20 of us on a van, okay? And so <laughs> when we go to the park in the summer, I know somebody is going to see a bee. The last thing I need <laughs> is for all of y'all running in the parking lot to get hit by a car. I promise right. you, we had we had a bee training drill, okay? <laughs> Just for, all right, and this is how it went. If you see a bee, don't run. This is what you do. You blow air slowly out of your mouth in the direction of the bee. It confuses the bee and the bee will fly away and you will be calm. And it works. And that's what the kids, a parent, watch the kid do that. Like, they're not gonna run. No, they're not scared. We don't do that. We don't freak out. You just blow. And the bee is like, where'd that come from? You know, it's not a swat. It's just a very gentle air. And the bee is like, okay, I'm not going to go over there. And the kid remains calm because, of course, you're inhaling and you're exhaling. And we're having this whole zen moment. It's like, yes, yes, that's what we need. Because all 20 of y'all running around talking, it's a bee. It's a bee. I don't even need that in my life. Everybody's agreeing with these bees, Shonice. Hey there, Shonice. She's like, <laughs> yes, but you know, Karen's still mentioning those underground wasps. That's a whole nother story. Underground bees in at the play with. Yes. So this has been so wonderful. You've given us so many tips. See, as an educator, you have been teaching us. Giselle has learned something. She's going to try that. Please don't get me killed, girl, is what she's telling you. Know. <laughs> Giselle, don't worry. Giselle, if you end up dead, let us know. We're going to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here today. This has been absolutely wonderful. We've enjoyed thank it. We're going to pop you back. We're going to pop you backstage. Hang out with us for a moment, and we'll talk to you after the broadcast is okay. over. Yeah, so we'll see you soon, Carla. And try some raw okra. It is a great snack. Oh, you know what, too? And just so that you know, you help Global Green Books. You wish you knew that trick could have saved her from all those past bee stings. You know, Giselle is still laughing. So we'll see you soon, Carla. <laughs> and now it's time for today's plant-based treat by Chef Laquita Marie. Great grilled cheese. Already made some grilled cheeses. I'm just going to show you the process. Plant-based cheeses do not have hormones of fat content found in animal-based dairy products that can lead to breast, prostate, and other cancers, nor do they trigger respiratory and intestinal inflammation caused by animal-based products. Earth Balance butter melting. This is a plant-based butter. Place the bread in a buttered pan. Add a slice of plant-based cheese. We like the brands Follow Your Heart and Chow. I'm just going to lay some of this plant-based meat that I made. All of these vegetables went into the plant-based meat. Red cabbage, Brussels sprouts, spinach, carrots, onions, and garlic. Cabbage and broccoli are loaded with sulforaphane, which fights colon, lung, and prostate cancer, while garlic can reduce the development of osteoarthritis. The meat is good by itself, and I also tried the cheese by itself before, but together they make like a really great mixture. Another slice of cheese right on top to hold everything together. Top it with a slice of bread. 
The plant-based meats had carrots, which are full of vitamin C for healthy immune systems and to promote healing for injuries. Also, the spinach has plenty of things for healthy immune systems and good vision. Turn the heat down so the cheese can melt and the bread doesn't toast too fast. Mm -hmm. Oranges are a great source of citric acid that help to prevent kidney stones. This is good. The smoke good to bring flavor. Mm. Good smoky flavor. Not overbearing. This reminds me of a ham and cheese. Yeah. It's really good. All right, everybody. We hope you enjoyed that plant-based treat. And we hope you try it. I mean, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And it's a great, delicious, it's great, delicious. I just was missing some tomato soup because I was thinking of grilled cheese with tomato soup. So oh, well, that's we'll true. do that one next time. Oh, but, yeah, I can do that. You know, I'll get some... Um, Tomatoes I'll get some tomatoes from Carla or the other Carla because she's saying she doesn't like okra the, and the slimy stuff on the inside. That's Giselle Moore. She also says, thanks so much. This was wonderful. Guys, we have had so much fun with our guests. You know, Carla has taught us so much. Um, Philip Waldo Jr., hopefully, you know, you've learned better now. She, she told us about the bees. He said as a kid, he sat on a nest of hornets. The outcome was not good. So I'm sure you don't need Carla to, to tell you what to do. You you know what to do now. You're welcome, Tilly. She says, thanks. You know, she speaks, uh, uh, I don't know which language, uh, which Ghanaian language, but I can watch her videos that are in a Ghanaian language and based on the body language, I've been doing pretty good interpreting. So I just got to work on my lessons. Yes. Well, we want to thank you for joining us on this episode of A Blind Guy. His wife. Their life. Keep joining us every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 11.15 a.m. for a half hour of great times with some great guests. Tomorrow, we actually have a professor from Bethune Cookman, Dr. Randy Nelson, who's been working with the Orlando Magic and other NBA and NFL teams on their social justice platform. So he'll be sharing some of his experiences with us as well. And don't forget this Saturday, February 20th, you can buy a ticket by visiting the website that's gonna scroll across our screen and for the Downing Growth Center, Cultural Arts Center, you can join us for the Carter G. Woodson Virtual Festival. Purchase your tickets for $12 and you'll see exciting internationally acclaimed acts that will be performing from noon until four. Yeah, I did drop it into the chat, Corey. So you're right. I um, With that information, they just have to uh, go to the Downing Gross Cultural Center and put in Carter G. Whitson, the brother that founded Black History Week or Negro History Week, I think it was was the it name. It was Negro the History Week and then it became Black History Month. Right. But we're we you know changing our names. We celebrate so. black history all day, every day, three hundred and sixty five days a year with Blind Guy, his wife their life and Occupy Entertainment. So with that, we want to thank you all for joining us. And to say goodbye, since Carla kept mentioning her experience with the Lion King, we say, No Sakonia Akuna Matata. Deuces. Deuces.